Now we're ready to start angularifying our forms or adding some functionality to them. So the goal of this video is when uh, we enter in some information into our fields here and hit send, what we'll do for now is log that information right here to our console. So that's the goal for this video. And we'll do that for all three forms uh, that we created so far. And if I pull up my uh, trusty little checklist, so the first thing we'll do is we'll go in, change around the HTML, we'll, we'll add the uh, ng form directive to it and um, use a few few things angular gives us in there and then we'll pull something into our off module we'll change that around a little bit and then uh, we'll change around our ts components and log the values from the form to the console and that's pretty much it and we're going to be using template driven forms uh, angular gives us in the in this video and like usual, I'll have um, a bunch of links down in the description, and you'll find these two down there as well, and that's going to be the pages that I'm going to be referencing in this video. And let's actually check this one out uh, first. This has really good snippets that I found earlier. If we um, click on that, and here's the ng form uh, directive, and we need to pull this forms module into our main module. We'll do that pretty soon. And then here are a bunch of properties um, that we're going to be checking out as well in this video. But for now, what, did I, what I really wanted to show you was this snippet right here. And this is basically exactly what we're gonna be doing in, in this video. What we'll do is we'll go in, into our HTML forms and we're gonna be adding the ng form directive. We're gonna be assigning a reference variable to it. In this case, they use F and I guess we'll keep it the same. And then we'll create a on submit button in the component. Uh, and this is what's gonna be logging it out to the console. And then we'll also use the ng model to bind to our input elements. So this is really good stuff what they got going on here. So I'm just going to copy and paste a lot of the stuff that they're doing here. So let's start right here. I'll copy this piece. Let's go into our login form or HTML and change that around first. Inside of the login component.html, uh, like it says in the documentation, we'll just paste it right inside of the forms. And I'll close this down. And this is an error. The reason we're getting this error is because we need to import it into our, our module, our forms module. So let's take care of that actually. So we'll open this up, our auth.module. And then right here at the top, I'll just copy this. It's very similar to this and change this over to forms. And this will be forms module. And copy this. Make sure you bring that into your imports array. And that's all we need to do inside the auth module. Save this and close that down. That should take care of this error. Uh, sometimes I got to give this a kick to get rid of that. Okay, good. So now it's saying that the, the method does not exist in the TS file. And we'll just copy and paste that snippet again right here. So it's going to call this method and that is this right here. We'll copy this. And this is what's going to console log at R form data to the console. Go back here and open up the TS file. You could hit Alt and U to open that up. And then right here at the bottom, I'll just throw that and make sure you bring in your ng form from Angular Forms. And that's all we need to do there. Save this and close this down. Now there's one more thing we need to do is uh, use our ng model with our input element. And again, I'll give this a kick though. Okay, that's working. So let's go out and grab that. If we go back to our snippet. So here, it's very important that you use the name attribute. Uh, if you don't, it's not gonna work. And then we're gonna use the ng model, uh, that's Angular. And this is HTML. And we're, we're saying that the field, this input field is required. And what's uh, pretty cool is Angular is going to actually recognize this, set the form the valid or not uh, pertaining to this. And I'll show you that in a second. Then we'll also set a reference variable and we're going to call it username. They're calling it first, but we'll call it username. Let's copy this, paste it in both of our fields. If we go back to our form and I'll throw it in here and here as well. Let's change the names around and this will be a username. Copy this, change this over, and this one's going to be password. Password. Okay, uh, save this, and it should format it for us. Now let's do one more thing before we actually check it out. Uh, let's add some um, fields here so we can see the state of the form. If we go back to here, they actually got a snippet right here. 
copy this. Now I'm actually going to add a few more like up here. There's a bunch of different properties. I'll add a few more like is it dirty? Um, also, I'll add another one. Is, is it invalid or not? So I'll add a couple more fields if we go back here. I'm going to time lapse this because I, I have to change around a lot of values. And I'll be back in one second. Okay, now I'm going to come back and remove these in a second. So you actually don't have to do this. This is just for testing purposes. So let's save this and let's check it out in the browser and uh, see what we got. This is the current state of our login page when we first load it into the browser. So right now the form is not valid, uh, valid set to false, and we have no values in our fields. And the reason Angular knows that this, this is not a valid form is because we added the re required attribute to the input element right here. And this is HTML. So what's cool about this is Angular actually recognizes this and respects this and knows that the form is invalid when you add these attributes. So if we go back here, so let's make this form valid. So let's add some information to this. So first, if you click on this and you notice this is set to false right now, touch, and you click out of it, it changes it to true. So it knows when the form was touched. It knows when the form was changed, uh, if it was dirty. So if we click on this and change it, now it's true. And then even if you get rid of it, it's still true. But uh, this input field is still not valid because it's required. So we'll, we'll add some information here. So now the uh, field is valid, but not the form. And to make the form valid, we change the second one. So now we have a valid, a valid form. And this is pretty good because now we could use this to disable like our button. And that's actually what we're gonna do. We'll disable this button if this form is not valid. That's what we'll do next. And keep in mind, there's a whole list of different uh, properties you could use. I'm only using a few in this example, but if you go back to that page we were looking at before, this this page, and here's a whole list of different uh, properties you could use within your forms. Now we're going to be revisiting this in the future. Like for example, in our register form, we're going to be adding another uh, password field and we'll add different kind of validation for that. But I'm keeping it real basic and simple for this video. So let's go back to our login. And let's test one more thing. Uh, let's add some values to this and open up our console. We want to make sure our method is working in, in our TS file. So if we hit send now, and that is working. So this is what we're going to send on to the back end to log the user in. And this is telling us that the form is valid. It's in a valid state right now. Let's go remove these fields here. Uh, this is just for testing. And then we'll go and disable this button. So when the form is not valid, uh, we'll have it where they can't click on this and send the information in. And we'll do that next. Let's remove these P tags right here. And then uh, get rid of all of these. These were just for testing. And let's, add, let's disable our login uh, button now. If the form is not valid, we'll, we'll have it where they can't click on this login method. And to do that, we'll just add in disabled. And then uh, the name of our form, the reference variable for our form is called F. That's what we called it. So F, and we know this has a property now if, if it's invalid, that's what we'll use. So if this form is invalid, disable this button so they can't send the information. In. Let's save this and let's check it out in the browser and see uh, if that's all working. So as you can see, the button is now disabled. And if we make the form valid, the uh, form is now valid, so it enables the button. So that's pretty cool. Let's add a little bit more uh, validation to this. And I was actually checking this out earlier um, right here. So when the uh, input field is valid, these classes get applied to it, or actually any condition. If it's touched, if it's not touched, if it's changed, it gets all these different classes added to each of these input fields. And uh, when that happens, you can apply styles to each of these classes. So let's go back here. So right now, these fields are in a valid state. So let's right click on that. And let's check these fields out. So right here, you can see that it's ng valid. So that, that class is being applied to this input field. 
let's actually make it invalid and see the change to it. So now it's an invalid uh, field. So we can apply classes or styles to these classes. And if we go back here, that's what they're doing here. And what I want to do is apply a green to the side if it's valid and a red to the side if it's not valid. And right here, they got a nice piece of snippet for us. And again, I'll have this link down in the description. You can just click on that and find this page. Now I'm going to apply this style globally. And the reason is because I want this to be used across all my forms. And if we go back here and to do that, we just go back to our project here and open up the style.css. And this is for all my global styles. And I'll just throw that in here. And right now I'll just leave it just the way it is with the coloring, but later on we'll be using SCSS variables, things like that. But for now, um, and I'm not quite sure about the coloring right now too, but I'll just leave it just the way it is for now. Save this. Let's go back to the browser. And as you can see, both of these are invalid now. And we got that little uh, red border. That's pretty cool. Let's make them valid. And this, and now we have a valid form and our button's working. So let's go and change over our other forms. Now I'm gonna time lapse this. The reason is, is it's, it's almost exactly what I did here. And keep in mind, all these uh, forms will be down in the description. You click on this link called snippets and you could just copy and paste this right into your project or you could find it on GitHub. But just to save some time, I'm gonna time lapse it and do the exact same thing I just did with the login form. I'll be back in one second. Okay, so I finished up the other two forms that we have. So here's our register form. And uh, let's go ahead and fix these errors though. Okay, so this is done. And our reset uh, password is done. And here are the methods. And let's make sure we save everything. Check it out in the browser, so save all. And let's see uh, what it looks like. So if we go to our register page, enter in some information here and check out the console. Our button is disabled, that's good. And now it's enabled, hit send. And here are all our fields that we're gonna be sending on when we create a new user. We'll definitely be adding, like I said before, we'll be adding more onto this later. And then if we go to our reset uh, password, enter in this and now our button is valid and send that in and that's being displayed to the console as well so that everything is looking really good so now in the next video we're ready to start actually uh, setting up our service and start making HTTP calls creating users and things like that from our front end and we'll start in on that in the next video so I'll see you then